In today's episode of Free Pilot Training, I'm going to explain what you need to know as a private pilot about GPS navigation. With today's technology, you've probably used GPS navigation quite a bit before getting into aviation. But because we fly our airplanes above the ground, and once you get your instrument rating, you could potentially fly through clouds, it's a little bit more complicated than what you're used to. Now, as you probably already know, GPS stands for Global Positioning System. And this is a complicated system that uses satellites to help us find our position on the globe. And it does this through a process known as trilateration. And the way this works is that the GPS satellite sends a signal to your airplane, then it calculates the time it takes for that signal to get there. Once it calculates the time, then it knows the exact distance you are from the station. But your location could be anywhere 360 degrees from the satellite. And this is what we refer to as a time solution. You won't be able to know your exact position with a time solution from only one satellite. But with the time solution from other satellites, the GPS system can quickly narrow down your position. So we need to be in range of multiple satellites in order for the system to accurately do this. Our GPS constellation has 24 satellites that orbit the entire Earth. And no matter where you are on the globe, your equipment should be able to receive a signal from five different satellites. With that in mind, in order to get an accurate two-dimensional position, your GPS receiver needs to be locked on to at least three different satellites. This allows the GPS receiver to give us our position in latitude and longitude. It also allows the equipment to track our movement. And because our aircraft fly above the Earth's surface, three GPS satellites are no longer enough to give us an accurate position report. To make sure we're receiving an accurate position, we need four satellites, and this gives us latitude, longitude, and altitude. But even with four satellites, sometimes these signals can get corrupted, and this can cause our GPS system to be less accurate. To keep this from happening, some GPS receivers have a special capability that allows them to monitor the integrity of the GPS signal. This capability is known as RAIM, and that stands for Receiver Autonomous Integrity Monitoring. Now, in order for RAIM to make sure that you're getting a good signal on all of the satellites, you have to have five satellites visible to the GPS receiver. On the other hand, if your airplane has Barrow aiding, you only need four for RAIM in this case. I don't want to get too far in the weeds here. You're going to learn more about this when you go for your instrument rating. Another way we can double check our GPS signal is through satellite-based augmentation systems, or SBAS. The one we use here in the U.S. is called WAS, the Wide Area Augmentation System. This system uses ground-based equipment which is placed in precise locations across the country. These are called Wide Area Reference Stations. In the simplest terms, these things take a measurement of your aircraft's location, then they take that information and send it over to a master station. Correction information is then sent up to the satellite so you're getting the most accurate position possible. In addition to that, these things act somewhat like a ground-based satellite, which greatly improves the availability of the GPS signal. Now you're probably wondering why I'm telling you all this, because you're just getting your private pilot's license right now. And the reason is, if you haven't checked RAIM, or your GPS doesn't have WAS, this line might not be as accurate as what you might think. So until you learn how to do that, you need to take what you see on these screens with a grain of salt. And the same goes for GPSs that don't have RAIM or WAS capability. These GPSs are for VFR flight only. Alright, so I've got a little homework assignment for you. Next time you get in the plane, I want you to ask your instructor how to check RAIM on the GPS in your airplane. It should only take a minute or so to do this, and this is going to really build a foundation for you when you start flying instruments. Just remember, if you have WAS in the airplane you're flying, you don't need to check RAIM. All that stuff kind of happens automatically. Alright guys, I hope your instructor already told you this, but to pass your check ride, you need to know how to use all the equipment installed on your airplane. Because of that, I'm going to go over the basics of how to use 99% of aviation GPSs out there. There's really only two buttons that a private pilot needs to know how to use. First is called the Direct To button. This is the guy that looks like a bow and arrow. And the other one is the Nearest button. These two buttons are available on almost every aviation GPS out there. To use the Direct To function, I use the mantra Direct Enter Enter. Start by hitting the Direct To button. Then, you can dial or type in the airport you want to go to. You can also go direct to GPS waypoints, which have five letter identifiers. You can find these on the VFR sectional, and you'll be using these a lot more when you go for your instrument rating. And you can also dial in VORs, which have three letter identifiers. Once you've made your selection, you can hit the enter button twice. 
On some GPSs, you only have to hit the enter button once, but after you do this, it'll draw a line right where you want to go. Pretty basic stuff, right? Next, we have the nearest button. When you hit this button, the GPS allows you to select or scroll through the nearest airports to your location. Once you make your selection, you can hit direct, enter, enter, just like in the previous example. And as you might have guessed, this button can come in very handy in an emergency or if you need to divert for some reason. And unfortunately, diverting procedures are a lesson that I don't think is focused on enough. But the nearest button is by far the best tool you have available to you in that situation. Let's talk about a couple more things that you need to know if you want to use the GPS navigation system safely. In order to use these to fly IFR, these need to be updated every 28 days. And that's because aeronautical data is constantly changing. There could be anything from new towers to new restricted areas, all kinds of different changes to the airspace that you're used to flying in. Now, maybe you already know about this restricted area, and you always fly the same route just south of the airspace to go get your $100 hamburger every Saturday. If they made this airspace bigger for some reason, and you didn't update your GPS, you could easily bust this airspace and not even know it, until you got a phone call from the FAA. So you can see how it's a good idea to update your GPS even if you're flying VFR. And while you legally don't have to update the GPS for VFR flights, you should check your route of flight with an updated VFR sectional before you fly without an updated GPS. And that'll help you keep stuff like that from happening. And in most cases, we can update these GPS databases ourselves without making an entry in the maintenance logbook. All right, so one more thing that might affect the accuracy of your GPS is the location of your GPS antenna. Now on airplanes with panel-mounted IFR GPSs, you'll usually find the antenna on top of the airplane. This allows the GPS to get a clear, unobstructed signal from the satellite. But on handheld VFR GPSs like this one, you usually have to mount them using a suction cup to the window or somewhere on the dash. And this can also cause your GPS to give you an inaccurate position. Now I hope I didn't scare you off in regards to GPS navigation. GPS is an awesome tool, but it has limitations and now you kind of know what those are. And with the information from this video, now you can check to make sure you're getting an accurate position from your GPS. If you learned something from today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Then once you do that, you should check out this video to keep on studying. See Same position.